Hi, it's Martin Perhiniak. Welcome back to PSD Touch Plus. Today I'm going to talk about selections. Now this is a big topic and we talked about it several times, but today I would like to show you a couple of well-hidden keyboard shortcuts and techniques that's not usually covered when we talk about selections. First of all, when you have the rectangular marquee or the elliptical marquee selected, you can hold down space while you are drawing a selection to move it around. That can be really useful. So I still hold down the mouse and I'm drawing the selection, but whenever I add space, I can move it around. So for example, if I start selecting something, let's just say I start selecting this one, but I also want to select the other version here to the right, then I can just simply press space to move it up a bit and then I can select both of these elements. Once you let go the mouse, you can still edit your selection. So even before using it for something, you can still edit the selection by going to the select menu and choosing transform selection. And this is a very interesting feature. It works just like the free transform tool, but instead of editing the image itself here, you are editing the selection. So if I drag this up, you can see I didn't change anything on the image itself, but I edited my selection. I can even extend it here a bit and so on and so forth. Once I press an, a return, it will turn into a selection. So that is also very useful to know. Let's say you need to make a selection which will be 200 pixels by 200 pixel because your client wants to have these uh, logo concepts uh, in 200 by 200 pixel sizes. So what can you do then? The easiest way to do that is again using the same selection tool, this basic selection tool, the rectangular marquee, but instead of using the normal style, set it to a fixed size option and type in 200 by 200 pixels here. Once you have that, you just simply need to click on the uh, image and move your selection over the part that you need uh, to separate. To easily extract this from the background layer, you can just simply press Command J. And I'm going to do the same with this one. I just click on the image, drag it over, and then press Command J. But as you can see, it didn't work because I selected the layer which has been already extracted. Well, I need the background layer to have uh, selected. So now it will work just fine. And once more, I click and I select this one in this case, or maybe let's just select that one. It overlaps a bit the other logos, so <laughs> I'd rather use this one here. And I'm going to again select background layer and command J. So now if I turn off the background layer, you can see we have these three layers separately. And I made sure that each of them are constrained into a 200 by 200 pixel size. Another very useful thing is how to separate something from a wide background. Obviously, I designed these uh, logos separately on separate layers, but now it's all merged onto one layer. How can I separate them from the wide background? There is a quite easy way to do that, and it's not with the magic wand or uh, the uh, quick selection tool, but it's under the channels uh, panel. Now here, you can find the black uh, channel, the yellow, the magenta, the cyan, and the composite CMYK. In this case, I'm in CMYK mode, but it works with RGB as well. And to be able to get rid of the white background, what I usually do is command click on the composite CMYK or RGB channel thumbnail, and that will create a selection. And based on that selection, I go back to my layers, I double click on the background layer, accept the change, and then I create a mask from this selection. So I click on mask to create the selection uh, or this, to save the selection into a mask. Now I need to invert this mask. So for that, I'm going to press command and control I. Okay, and we already have a much better view. And let's just test this by adding another background, I'm going to create a new layer. By the way, I press down command while clicking on the new uh, layer icon. That means my new layer will be created below the selected layer and not on top. So let me just show this. If I click on the icon, it will create 
automatically on top of the selected layer if I press command or control and click on this icon it will create it just below it now if I want to fill this in with a color let's just fill it in with something which won't uh, confuse us with the other colors on the image itself so now we have this color here and to be able to make this better because as you remember the colors were better in the original image I need to alt click or option click on the mask okay and here I need to make sure that these uh, visible parts of the image are all pure white and there's two ways to do that first of all I show you the easier one I just alt click on it again and I will press command J to duplicate the layer a couple of times until it shows up properly so probably something like this is fine if I delete the third one it still looks good so I just simply duplicated the layer and it's already much better so now if I turn it off I can still see a bit of transparency so I can just start uh, adding more layers to it now let's just check and as you can see it looks much better and as I said there's another way to do this instead of duplicating these layers if I just delete them and I keep one I can alt click on the mask and then press command or control L for levels and here in levels I can drag this marker until everything gets much brighter okay like that and maybe this middle point as well drag it a bit further down and now as you can see I've turned everything into white which means these, these details will be visible from the original layer and everything which you see as black will be uh, invisible so now if I alt click on the mask you can see it looks really good I turn off the background layer and as you can see we've done a quite good job by starting from a channel um, selection and then turn it into a mask and then editing the mask and if I now select that background layer and turn it into white you can see it looks much better and we can check without the mask I shift click on the mask and with the mask there's hardly any difference so our selection is quite accurate and that's all what I wanted to show you today I hope you enjoyed this part of the shortcut series and I hope you will join me next time as well thanks a lot for your attention